on this meeting. No, but I should call the meeting to order. Yes, yeah. you should okay. before so I, let's yes. Do that. Thank you, Tim. And the first item is really to uh, have a motion on the minutes of our 12-15 meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. That way. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so we, we have a protocol for the groups to follow. It's called the four A's. Patty, would you like to just explain to folks how the protocol works? Sure, so I'll be passing these around. And basically, it's a protocol for us to discuss the books that were handed out um, last summer. And it's to talk about what you agree with in the books, what you aspire or want to work toward in the books, the alignment between our current reality and what the book has, and any adjustments we need to make between what the book says and what we would like to do. So the back of the sheet, as you get it, will be places for you to take some notes on. And each group has a facilitator um, to give time for folks to think about what they want to write down for those four areas, and then start a conversation. Hopefully everybody's got their sheets. I don't think it went all the way around. Where is it? Oh, it? sorry, I stopped it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just fine. Yes, I'll take in the weapons. Thank you. I don't know. You guys good? Yeah, take the next one. It's just recording the meeting in general. Oh, okay. So we just right. left that's it there. Fine. Yeah, that's yeah. Fine. Oh. Um, so everybody's got their sheets. So let's do the 4A protocol. I think it's probably best to start with each other sometimes to actually fill out the 4As and then we can bring it back to discuss some section. No, we have five minutes to do that. And then we can have time to do it. Yeah, yeah. Did you so good. Right. Well, we're going to do this early call. Did they assign a facility for you? Care patients, so I didn't get an email. All right. So, all right. So, that's it's a copy of the book. Start. Somebody else. 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 Somebody so everybody just take a minute to go over the protocol. Just read through some real quick, just to make sure we understand what they're saying for it. Sorry. Sorry. Being held hostage by everyone. Hey, which group is Steven? 
is over here with us. I would, oh, oh I'm did you know. hold you hostage? No, yes, Pete. Did. Did. <laughs> Talk about the yeah. issue. Yeah. 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 I'm going to invite the two members of the public yeah. to join. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Join a group. I felt like it was a test I had to be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can join whichever group you like. Absolutely. I'm not going to be discussing. And so I think all we can all discuss what our reality is. Yes, we do. All right. Practices. Thank you. Um, because I am yeah. not I didn't need those books for either. So and I know you guys probably didn't either. Well, I don't know if you did or not. Oh if no, I they, did they, what? the the folks in the, the I'm talking public. About, to Annie and yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Christian. Kristen. Yes. Um, my name is Kristen. Kristen Allen. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> And I'm assuming that you're not familiar with these books. Um, I have seen them. Off the back and the notes if you want, but I, so I have you want to bring up. Okay, Annie? Oh, you have I haven't seen those, no. Okay. So we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> these guys can give us their opinion of the books and we can just talk about what we think about reading. But I have not left them, so I'll just up here. You are for some offense to whatever you like. Thank you. That's for a full school, so.
Oh, really? Oh, no, we want you to take your time. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I go back into my Vermont speed sometimes, you know. Just like, okay, I'll get, get I'm taking the dirt road. I don't need I'm just going to roll. Let's see. Um, it's, well, it's 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 where I grew up. It was a it was a this, this doesn't even feel rural to me based on where I grew up. Um, I don't need to do a summer. I, I filled out my scores. Um, so looking at you guys are writing about books that haven't read the book. This might take a different turn. Okay. Sure. Um, are we discussing? Let's go through some of the protocol and then see what he thinks on that. Um, so looking at the agreements. Which part of the task do you agree with in terms of the work we have to do for this? Right? Is that just going to be kind of the back and forth? It might be better. It's going to be interesting to hear from you. My understanding, we're just going to this guy. So I think why they were chosen is because this is just my understanding of why they were chosen. It was because that Gusky is one of the first. We talk about grading practices and education and looking at what would be best practice. And then from there, other people have branched out from that. So, like Ken O'Connor, that would not be a That's why he was chosen. I'm not sure why someone else was chosen above him, but I think that's probably why because it's one of like the fathers of upgrading. Okay. So, I, so you can go through the protocol. Sure. Like, would you mind taking yeah. notes, Sam? Sure. Well. Okay, take notes. Well, they you might have us report out after, but our conversation may be a little different in this group, and that's okay. Um, so, you want me to go first? Or sure. to go first? Um, so, something, one thing that stood out for me um, that he talks about, and I forget which book because it's been since the summer since I read it, but using multiple pieces of evidence to transfer is the same thing. And he talks about that a lot about how many pieces of evidence he calls a product. That's really can we determine a child's score, a child's achievement levels with only a few pieces of evidence? And so it's really calling for multiple pieces of evidence over a quarter or a trimester, however your grading system is set up to really make sure that you have enough to give a child proper feedback and give your parents and guidance to their, their child's staff. So that was one of the big takeaways for me. And with uh, percentage mm -hmm. and then he goes on yeah, to talk about done. all these other things. Um, based upon, sorry, I looked at so well, you know, to be yeah. trying not to get too much into like the edge of speak and the slang language and everything. I think a lot of what he does, especially in 
on your mark it just talks about the purpose of grades like why do we give them what's the purpose behind them what are we really trying to target or communicate when we provide grades and i thought that was really one of the big takeaways he talks about the importance of what is it what are you trying to communicate to families um are we allowing students to reflect or self-evaluate based on what they know or what they don't know? Um, how is it used as a tool to determine whether or not teachers' instruction is up to par or whether the programs that we're using are meeting our needs? Um, he talks a lot about and kind of talk again using that as a communication tool about who's your audience. So how is that report card crafted in a way that meets your audience needs? And then I threw this in here just because it's something that aligns a little bit more with some of my philosophies as far as grading. But he talks a bit about the power of zero and how that can really skew a child's grade when you, you know, if you're talking about that hundred point scale. And he has a nice diagram on one the pages there 27 in one of the books where it just kind of talks about how that can really has more of an impact than you may realize um, so um, something else that stood out to me was the issue of plus and minuses. Um, talking about how is it an A and A is a B and B between the plus and the minus to say if you're an A student, does it mean it's different if you're an A minus student versus an A plus student versus an A student? Is an A and A? And I found that conversation. That aligns, we won't go too far down this road. No. But that aligns with what Ken O'Connor had mentioned when we yes. met with him. And he said, how many different levels can you really have and say that there's a clear difference between them? You know, if I'm grading a, a research paper from a sixth grader that's a page long, do I have a hundred different degrees of, of, of achievement with that kid? I don't. Like what's an 87 versus an 86? There's, there's probably, you know, is it the kid usually listens and raises his hand? Is, is there like, is it a comma? I mean, you don't have a hundred different ways. So Ken O'Connor talked about um, the amounts of the different degrees or the different levels. And so I think that's what you're hitting on with the plus and minus. If you just go A, B, C, D, F, I can tell you five differences between a paper that a child turns in that's, you know, these set of skills are demonstrated for A, these set of skills are demonstrated for B. But if you tell me, give me a hundred different ways that this child's going to demonstrate achievement, one, it will take me the entire day to grade one paper. And two, um, I won't be able to do it effectively without being a little bit subjective at some point in the process. So I'm going to get off that little pedestal real quick. Um, so the next section talks about aspirations. So which part of the text might our work aspire? What What's our goal moving forward? What we're moving towards? Brian said this. Do you want to go first this time? I just say I did a good job of self managing because I wanted to interject that I'm not going to. I'm you gonna can. Wait. <laughs> I have aspirations with things, but I'll wait here. Okay. Um, I do. Sure. Um, um, and I think that the part that I just wrote down, and again, this was, I'm, I'm jogging, I think a June or July reading on this. So, so I'm, I'm trying to balance whatever I'm recollecting with kind of where I see ourselves as a district right now. And I just wrote down communication. Uh, I wrote down, how does our current model meet or fall short in the eyes of the community? And I, I think that's kind of, kind of the basis of this whole conversation this afternoon. And one of the big takeaways from the meetings was the lingering questions about motivating students. What actually motivates students around grade? To, to learn, to grow, that's how do we effectively motivate them? How we do what it, system do we put in place right. that, right. that would help with motivation? What is, what what kids to we been, said, like, beyond just basic regurgitation of skills, so just multiplying facts. Like, how do we get kids to actually have this deeper learning? And that's developmental. There's yes. elementary, how do you motivate? middle how do you motivate high school like everyone's got their own carrot right so you gotta you really gotta make that different for the even versus a kindergartner versus a third grader yeah sticker kindergarten 
That's all my son needs. Give him a sticker. It's good to go. Good to go. You guys have to try this too. I didn't know if we could or not, so I was just kind of saying, no. Well, you can do the Something that should be on one of our goals or something towards grading. Well, I can so, tell you from my son's uh, point of view, so his motivation is his yeah, just got I mean, his grades and going into college and like different things. Like like uh, no, he's, yeah, he's in eighth grade. Okay. So, but we have started since he was first grade yes. talking about what's so, like, the progression for him and kind of talk about physically where financially not people, I don't think most people are nowadays to, to really pay for college. So, you know, being able to get those scholarships, he's not physically in sports and stuff like that. So, so you know, so that's where the strong point is as an intelligent kid. So looking at the grades and how they kind of kind of really are divvied out. It's it's become a struggle for us to kind of really look at a lot of these different things. They've been we're new to the school for just for two years. So bear with me because it's still kind of all this stuff is new. Um, but he's gone from you know not instead of the teacher having the percentages and that's like that he's always kind of really strive for okay I'm looking for that A I'm looking for I know that this is what an A is. So on and so forth. He's now going. Well, what is what does that mean? What is proficient? I mean, basic proficiency. And I'm like, well, oh, that's from a one. And I've done my research, so I can try to explain it to him. For me, one point five to a, a two point four, and that's passing. He goes, well, that's not fair. So I should get the same grade as somebody who is a one point five. Then if I work with a two point four, like that's not fair to me. And you know, so he's being looked at in the same aspect as. All these other kids that are at a different level than him when they group together and they're saying that they're saying proficiency, and it's really not. Um, the other struggle is, is that the trying to figure out what grades matter. Um, and so, in my opinion, and this has been one of the things that I wanted to bring up was all grades matter. If you're how are they going to figure it out? There's most of the grades that are being incorporated in the final grade is kind of like next year. They can't gauge that. And as his parents are getting these these weekly reports, which is great, but it's all showing towards, and then at the end of the year, they mess up on the test, and all of a sudden they get, you know, instead of being superstars, they're, you know, not, they have no time to really kind of, okay, let's see where you kind of struggle there, let's try to help. We have no opportunity to present with them either. So that's kind of my standpoint, a little bit on some of the things you touched on. I don't have any children currently in the schools. My grandchildren, I do sub a lot. My, my grandchildren are in school and they aim to get really good grades and it's important to them to, you know, I mean, they come home and they take pictures of their report cards and send them out to everybody and that kind of thing. And they love getting the A pluses or the B pluses or whatever. And, and they work very hard to get get the grades that they get so as far as a motivational thing um there's a reward system in in getting it i do understand the zero thing the impact of getting a, a real failing grade is like that's going to bring it way down and how do they ever get it up and you know the hopelessness of that so there has to be a balance with that um but i think i think also the whole element of communication that you're talking about communication to the child about how they're doing and to the parent because that's that's a part that i hear tom talking about and other educators all the time is um parents who who are not involved as much as you'd like and it is one of the three pillars of success for kids and if the communication is transparent and clear so parents know what's going on in the classroom and they understand what's happened then they can have not all will but some of them who would like to will be able to have conversations with their kids about what's happening and get more involved so and i also think homework is an element of that that where parents can see homework and they can see what kids are actually doing in class not everybody will 
but give them an opportunity, give more of them an opportunity. So that's the communication. Piece. I know you talked about like the separation. Well, you know, about the and also gives them. And I like the structure. We're trying to develop these kids. To, you know, good habits make them really good in so their their work ethic later on in life. But like being able to have mold them into kind of enough like the time and the schedule things and stuff like that. But as parents, we don't spend as much time as we do as teachers. And so when they're with us, it's like it's time there. So we try to be as involved as possible and try to kind of like really touch base with all these different things because if we don't have the capabilities sitting down in front of the for me for asking for more work in front, the thing is, is that I already told you know, them I was going to ask for it. But the thing is, is that being able to see them on a daily basis, what is he doing? How can I help them? If I'm not proficient, who am I going to find to help them to make sure that he's achieving his goals, that he's capable of that? He's very knowing information. And there are a lot of sets of kids that are. Right. More people like the people that have had. Well, I'm not just saying on behalf of my son and for me, I'm also sure that I'm going to be able to get other parents that aren't able to make it tonight. So, um, with IEP, it's like 504, it's the different things that we already established and already did. There's less of a determination as to how to pinpoint where those help is going to be needed. We don't really look at the whole picture as to where they need it. So, if we're just looking at tests, and, that and they're not strong in tests, you're really not going to have a lot of what's the for that. So uh, take that one step further. further. I think every system is going to have flaws. Looking at a rubric. So, so no matter what, we can have a conversation and get on the floor before we start. Right. Whatever so we're kind of already creeping into the next one, which is the alignment. So our current reality versus where are our gaps? Where do we need to? We've got to find a way to... Um, so one of the gaps that I see, a big one, was that families need a system they can understand. I'm sorry. That families need a system they can understand. Mm -hmm. That's what I keep hearing. That's what is one of the biggest struggles, and their their perception of like they don't understand like what's going on if kids can't you have like to sit with your son and be able to explain to him like what this you know the one the five or the two yeah they have to look at this book i mean like i have no comprehension and i really still to I don't have no comprehension on how those numbers even come up to play as to what is how they gauge it with percentages, we're looking at the numbers. They 100% they should fully understand without any help whatsoever, maybe even a foul in the fact of what you're being taught. 50%, you understand it 50% of the time, and so on and so forth. So for me, that's easy, much more you can talk about three comprehended. I'm just trying to understand this dimension. I'll explain it out. We're going to close it out. It's good. I like that. But for him, that's a little bit too. So he wants to be able to kind of understand how this helps as well. So he really just doesn't have any plan. The school said, we're going to change. They said, because the community, don't you worry about it. Probably similar, Christine, to what you said. I just said, I think that we're stuck between two different philosophies of grading right now, especially this year, because we're shifting a little bit more towards the A, B, back to the A, B, C, D, which is fine, but we still have our other foot firmly planted on this other philosophy. And if you were to talk to any of our teachers right now, they, they'd say, you can't, you can't do both. You can't say, I want half of this and half of that. This one's a square, this one's a circle, and say, make it work. I think there's, there's, so we have to figure out that philosophy piece. And I think that we can't just discredit or just toss aside Gusky or, or Ken O'Connor. I think that we have to look at the current research and then look at our needs and figure out what makes the most sense. I think that there's a balance there that's not all the way here or all the way there. And I think that um, we just have, we have to find a balance. And that's what these conversations and future conversations are probably going to help us get to. But um, again, right now we're in the middle.
and, and it's, the middle is a tough spot to be. So, in, in the sense that we're undecided, I guess. Do you articulate what you, what you feel like are the two different philosophies? I'm not disagreeing. I just, well, I, I mean, like I just, we're looking at a, like a true competency, a true competency based system right now. And whether or not we're doing that to the, to the you know, to its, its best ability is a different conversation entirely. But, you know, when you look at a complex space system, there are four degrees of achievement. There's EP at the elementary level, IP, LP. Yeah. It's either BP or IP, is kind of big, which is basic proficiency or in progress. And then there's the LP. And isn't there also a fourth grade which is highest, which isn't really given? E. 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 It is given. There's never been a full definition as to what things need to do in order to achieve an E. So, I mean, it's kind of like I, I've never seen it, and my son isn't on all student. And so, for me, and I, he has friends who are on all students, and they're a very intelligent group of kids, and we've never seen an E, nor have we gotten a full definition as to what kids actually need to attain. In order for them to get that. So, Mick, to clarify something, is the definition or is the example? That's where um, I think it is um, structured to achieve the point. I think it's yeah. more yeah. 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 So that's you know, what we as parents, as kids, for so early grade, when we look at achieving or when we're assigned something, saying this is what you need in order to do. Now, for kids, it's great. It's in order to achieve the goal of the artificial job at work. We're given this direction saying, in order to get to here, point A, you have to go D. And so on and so on. There's not really anything saying, okay, if they get 20% of this or 100% of that or 20% of that or this or that, and let's you know, take away the fact that it's, you're not looking at percentages anymore, so looking at numbers and letters that you know I really don't really coincide with what we grew up with, that we don't have knowledge. And I'm not saying it's like that. I'm just saying it's outside of our realms of expertise, so it's not being fully defined to us. We have no knowledge of what it really is. So we're learning things too, just as much as these kids. So if we're not really provided the information, then how is it going to be really Yeah, so I'm looking at that you're not. And there may be some truth when you look at the E piece <laughs> is that definition being interpreted the same at the different well, levels? You know, and I didn't mean to be curt or, or cut you off, but you know, at, at Memorial, that there is a students are getting ease. Okay, it's not, it's not over common. You know, it's, it's it's a tough one to attain. Nor but, should it be. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Fair, fair. Yeah. There's yeah. that rigor piece, right? Right. Sure. Did, yeah. Are, yeah. Did you want more so from me, Tammy? That's the philosophy. That's our current. That's our current situation. That's where we're going to see those. Like you feel like there's a second. Well, I mean, I I think there's there's that hundred point scale. Um, that's more of like that traditional piece, you know, and, and it's, it's the one I grew up with, experienced growing up with, you know. And, I used to too. Yeah. And then you know, so you have those hundred points, and then going to the plus minus, then you have like your. D, three levels of D, three levels of C, three levels of B, three levels of A. And so there's just, there's a, there's, it's a different approach to grading for, for a teacher. Like if I sit down and I'm looking at, I use, you know, an essay example because that's just my teaching background. But if I'm sitting down with a student essay piece and I have a rubric, a four point rubric, it's a different approach to that, determining that grade than if I'm, all right, by the end of this, I'm going to, it's going to be somewhere between zero and a hundred based on, you know, so some indicators that I may have that I'm looking for. And maybe I'm using a rubric, maybe I'm not, but you know, that's that's how I would approach that. So 
I hate to use an overused term, but it's more, maybe more of a traditional philosophy versus, I don't know what you would want to call controversy based, maybe more of a modern, I don't know if modern is the right word though, it's probably not, but just it's, just it's just a different approach to assessment, it's a different approach to communicating no, achievement. Not only parents understand, so the last one actually is what do we think needs to be done in order for us to achieve success in our grading and reporting? And so you didn't which is really I have to say that for all the years that I've been around this whole competency-based thing. I still don't understand these four things of the rubrics that go into a competency-based grade. I'm assuming when you're saying numbers, you know, a zero to 100, you're talking on a pure academics, but I don't know. I don't know. I have to make a lot of assumptions. It's absolutely not clear what competency-based grading is. And if that were made clear, and if it were then translated into ABCD, it might be more of a communication thing. It isn't like you have to throw it out if it's any good. It's that it has to be clear. I'll loan you my two books. You, you would love them. I'm confident to be. Yeah, those two books. These two books. It isn't, it isn't that. It's that what we're using now. Oh, oh, okay. So it's not the understanding of the core idea. It's the way it's playing out in our schools. Yeah. How okay. it's been communicated or I just didn't understand when, when you said you didn't it made sense now. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah. your destiny. It's looking more as to how the kids are going yeah, or the, the process of learning, but just, what the end result is, correct? That's what the competency is. Competency based is one of the best the end result. There's that kind of That's my understanding. That's a great question. So I think it's looking at Exactly. skills and then how they apply their knowledge to put that's what i don't understand as to so you're so you're just just about the story about and now about i have all the kids we're in their 20s so i've gone through both types of school systems here and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are in their 20s and i have all the kids who are Looking at the end result, yeah. I have, um, yeah. and I mentioned the IEP earlier because my daughter is high functioning autistic. So I've gone through the IEPs and the transition to being able to kind of look at I said I wasn't how kids have adjustments, but they would think we're not looking at the average. The average kid learns a different way. There's not every one kid has a marginal way. One is more um, creative and more everybody learns something different. You can have to adjust. Yeah. There's no um, so the process, I think, is important. The end result, if they're not, if the process is not being analyzed, they go through the different steps as to what they're learning, then the end result is not a real number of or the end result. The answer is what they've learned. I've had four kids, I have four children. So I have four kids, one of them is the same age as my daughter, and she's very attached to me. So nervous. And then it's never whether I get to on one day or not, it's so new. It's just yeah, for this one day. I'm not going to have you in the station. He can tell you two things. I'm going to have you in the station. There's a cat line or something coming up. It is too nice. But if you're never really looking at it, that's the number of our priorities. That's what the actual grades are. The grades that were given to the kids were not taken into the court into their final grades. You're never going to just going to say, oh, these kids didn't get it. Yes. You can get it. I'm just going to get it the way that you guys are looking at it. I'm going to say you guys use the space system and just some stuff. So for me, I look at it from all aspects. 
for each one of the kids, not just one sided. My youngest, very school oriented, can get it like that. He can take touch, whatever. And so, but I, like I said, I have a wide variety of different kids that run different ways. And so that's what I'm really concerned with with our kids now. I'm not just my own, but several of our kids that I've become very close with in the past two years. So, it seems like it seems like the biggest gap is the communication gap. It isn't whether it's competency based or it's or it's or it's this or it's that. It's it's I I mean there's a lot about the competency base that I really like. You know that kids actually take stuff. I mean I I went to a school I learned a whole lot of facts and figures and I didn't really learn how to implement or you know how to use them or, or that kind of stuff. So I think that I think that part of the educational piece is really great that's going on. I really like that. Um, I like the project based stuff. Um, but I think having a grading system that clearly communicates to the kids and to the parents and each teacher really understands and owns and uses Alma to communicate is just really important and, and have little short teaching things for parents on how to use Alma, make it a communication tool. We've got, we've got stuff here that we can do. You know, I, my feeling is that it's about communication. It's about opening it up. It's about being transparent with the grading system. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with communication. I get emails saying my son didn't keep something in, and then I go and check, and I completely turn it in. I'm like, why am I getting emails? I listen to you, and you're just, you know, it's it's communication. Yeah. Which you hit on right away. <laughs> Yeah. And it's the heart of where we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see me showing up. I think one of the adjustments, other, and we're on new to the districts too. I'm looking at it is the decade average issue. I'm sorry. The decade average issue, I'd like to see that go. I don't think that that's doing anybody a service. What's, what's that? The decaying average, yeah. We talked about that at one of our other last meeting or the one before. So some of the homework that gets done at the beginning of the year is way less than. The work that gets done towards the end of the quarter, trimester, end of the year. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want kids. Part of it, where, you know, where I receive feedback from parents when they're struggling is you have the really super intelligent kids who can kind of bend the system like, okay, so I'm going to get this point, this, and this. And then by uh, this point in the year, and I can do this, this, and this, and then still I'm reaching out at the end and of the school year. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's the message is that only at certain times their effort needs to be put forth, but I would like to see effort being put forth all the time. And it would go along with, with the whole um, intervention. You know, and the effectiveness oh, yeah. and stuff. I mean, just with everything, we're setting the stage to looking, looking at our assessments and you know, what the board wants in regards to the NHS, the SAT, working away from that. You're not going to be a big message that your effort every day from when you walk in the door to when you pass the homework the next morning, it counts. Every day, all of that. That is just one of the the biggest issues and the factors for change and that's why i kind of put on here about voting we all have in our hearts to, to motivate the students forward, but i think that's kind of doing a service and motivation side I wrote yeah. 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 That yeah. That yeah. 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 It was my kids. went through. My son graduated in 2014. Okay. My daughter left at eighth grade in 2014. She went to private school. Mm -hmm. high school. Um, and I never heard of this day as having this day ever. That was a concept to me. I guess I kind of get the philosophy behind it, but I think my son. I don't think that would have been the one that would have figured out. 
teaching our report card. Well, it's and teaching our kids also how to move the data from the final number two, which all the teaching them short parts are away from white. I'm sorry, I don't want to just repeat that. So I definitely see what the fact that we're describing that's kind of what this means. The beginning should be accountable for the great advantage of the I think that is where we're going to start. I think there needs to be a lot of work done in regards to PLC in regards to the level of the teachers to calibrate things. If you're teaching from grade, I would like for us to have the same assessment in fourth grade. So the parents understand that regardless of who their child's teacher is, they're learning the same materials. They're getting the same assessments, so they have their same measurements. It's a horizontal alignment. It's part of that, yes, but I think like drilling that even down further, it's those discussions for teachers, that communication between them, and then saying, okay, what are we considered to be a mastery level, or whatever term we want to use? We want to look at, okay, what's the level of mastery? What does that look like? What does it look like? Our kids understand what, what we're being measured, and so the parents can finish the we get that rubric yeah, yeah, right. exactly. before the unit. <laughs> <laughs> Kiddos know in order for me to do well in this assessment and well in this unit, whatever that's going to be in photosynthesis, let's say, I need to do these six or seven things if I'm going to learn the A or the E or whatever it is we decide. So I think that's something that's missing too because I think kids need to be responsible for their own learning. And they have that in something in their body. Oh, right. I just learned how to do this. I identified all these parts with the, you know, base of the brain. I did this. I went through this. Yeah, those kind of things. And this is something that's missing. I think we have some more work for that. For example, how often do the PLCs meet? Um, so the PLCs K eight meet once a week. Once a week, okay. And that's not in the early dismissal Wednesdays. That's a regular thing. That's a. It's part of. It's part of the regular work day. Oh, good. It's embedded in the schedule okay. for the very purpose of, of talking about data for students. So we just finished the NEWA assessments. So now we're looking at those data discussions around who's, moved, who's doing well, who are we worried about, what is the plan to move the kids forward. All of those discussions take place in the PLC. The reality is, though, we're talking about a 45-minute period. Yes. To talk about some of, at my school, for example, somewhere between 90 and 100 kids. So yes. the ability to talk about where that data point is, yes. those groupings, you're not getting a lot of curriculum on conversation by the time you get through 45 minutes because so there's always going to be a new kiddo each week and a cup you know are we going to adjust you know we talk a little bit about pacing and instruction but when we talk about the big picture of curriculum and programming you know there's that you can't fit that in a 45 minute block so it's just that's where because we think about what calendar we want you know that's yeah i mean I'm, I'm 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 concerned about not having the early dismissal wednesdays i i really yeah, I'm not sure that I think I think it's a good idea. And I think that they need to do that planning and stuff. And particularly as we're trying to align curriculums vertically and horizontally, I'd really like to see it. So, you know, I'd advocate for that with the, with the school board. You know, I know that there's some parents who don't want it, but sorry. Let's let's it's about educating the kids. <laughs> So I happen to be in favor of it. I'm not on the school board to vote, but I'm in favor. I'm also in favor of measure bold results. Assess and see whether it's enough, too much. Are we, you know, are we helping you? So I mean, I have no mark on that one. It works very well for secondary level because middle school, high school level. Where the kids get out, they work on things that they're missing. Practice is 
earlier. There's that's eight different now. things yeah. that you can have. So they can get a swim time yeah. and their yeah. ice time. But that's the problem. So, so, so you, you can say, okay, okay this is a game. This is a game. Well, like I said, uh, I mean, he enjoys the early hours. Personally, like I said, I'm just wondering the fact. Now that way it's going to help the parents. I see the pros and cons in both aspects of it. So I really would feel like I wouldn't be able to kind of really weigh on this. I mean, Tammy, I don't know what feedback you've had. I mean, I think one of the big things is the consistency of it. It's kind of a, a sticking point with a lot of things. I've, we've just, you know, we've been getting some, we've been getting some feedback for the last few days when people heard that it was, you know, discussed. And then uh, we just heard that it's not. Um, it's um, I personally was really by, bought quickly, I had bought into the, the positive aspect of it and the collaborative opportunity for the staff in the future. Because as you're saying, as you're pointing out, the 45 minute planning varies. It's just not very much. It doesn't sound like a lot of time. You have a very tight agenda that you can try to make. Incremental progress but each yeah. week, but now they have and it ends up being maybe 35 minutes, 36 minutes by the time not the kids uh, get into uh, special bathroom uh, uh, actual sit time. And, and that brings us back to the, the, the one of the things that was on Facebook that I thought was concerning, but I didn't feel like it was there wasn't enough for me to really start to argue with people about it. I'm not gonna, you know what I mean? Like I I I chose to just let people have their say and um what people don't know is that you were backing them up that right. So if you did one early release every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, you'd have two hours. So you get the staff meeting plus the early release hour together, which is really, really good alignment times, right? And that's something that, that I we need we need that to do. This is just a little piece of what we need to do what we're talking about right now, right? A tiny piece. I mean, we have a lot of work. Lot and that's the thing is that there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, I'll say that tonight, right? But I, I understand that there's consternation for me to do. I, I put forward a second option. Um, I've got some other ideas. So I'm always working on it. I'm trying to be creative. Maybe some of the pushback you might get is probably maybe from the younger. I was thinking yeah. pretty much when yeah. my kids were younger, it was harder for me to get out of the work to come and get them. But as older, that's why I'm kind of just like, oh, he can come home. Yeah. He can come home. He can be there. And it's and you know, he is not under supervision, but the other at the same time, the mom is going to put this in a general nice way. It's not you know, guys' job to be who's watching our kids. Right, right. I refrained from posting that heartily on Facebook last night. So, yeah, I did what Tammy told me. Wait. I think I honestly don't. I don't know. 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 I don't I just wrote that I, I felt like we needed an explicit plan to explain the why behind our current system or we need to have a defined process right with you know this is something that um, is said this morning and, and have teachers parents all the different constituents at the table to talk about what's going to meet our needs and, and figure it out through our, through our process so um, I, I went on a little bit, but that was essentially that. Oh, come on, Ryan, let it out. It's <laughs> always so weird. Um, in order for change to happen in certain processes, I think someone's voice is being left out of this. Besides, like the parents and, and getting them to write in rules for our teachers, I would think our teachers are in the trenches day in and day out. And I think their voice um, and their autonomy needs to be yeah, so heard with, with this, respected. They may have some so amazing so suggestions on how this could be improved, how we could move things forward in the right direction. So 
right? I would think, or I would I mean, encourage the board to really here, look at I don't see that maybe examples, surveying the teachers. If you have a group I think it's, it's skill, find out a focus group, but for teachers to sit in a focus group as parents or board members, you may not get into the, you're going to get a filter response. Where I think if you conduct a survey with that, that way your response may be anonymous, you could get some great data. Um, for teachers are at like, where they see all the struggles or they see the struggles. They right, have so some great suggestions on how this could be a great to what we could do, you how we could communicate, what it could look like. I think that is a big missing piece of this. Um, she said, and then you should have maybe you're going to take it down. I don't maybe taking into step up surveys on new teachers and their own children. And then you think that there are some that are really taking more to all the learning and taking the time on what they I hate using and I use it like a little bit of slacker so we want to see as well as possible. Yeah. Um, so there are other groups that really are in tune to how they're learning in their morning and also the parents too as well because we know our children just as much as you know our family and just as much as the teachers know that with us and not with us. So you're making progress. Oh, that's important. Yeah, but but also for those, are, those yes. sitting on their couch or I just I did there were talks of getting focus groups together. Because because so I just think for the teachers it needs to be something that they're but they're not filtered. So yeah, they're they're absolutely open-ended, unidentified, let them let them yeah. pour out pour out whatever they think. Yeah. 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 And that they I think they need to in order for us to go through the process. Of, of really looking at what's best for our kids, looking at what our all these stations, our families, our educators, and I think that they're they can offer some meaningful insight to the And I think that we also have to be cognizant of the fact that when we look at the last couple of years between the pandemic, between a reorganization, and now another shift, we've used a lot of equity with teachers. You know, the, the, a lot of them felt like, oh my goodness, we just keep getting pushed, pushed, pushed. So we just want to. Whatever, wherever we end up, we have to get the buy-in, and we have to really think about that culture piece because we need the teachers to be invested in whichever direction we go for this to be successful and for it to work for kids, for for it to work for the district. We just there's going to be a really important component to getting that buy-in, and the process will get us there if we do it right. Yes, and that's why there just needs to be that voice. Yeah. And I think I think that if you, I think your buy-in. When I talk to teachers, what I'm seeing is that they really, they really want, they want to give the kids a chance to learn. Yes. They really, really want to educate them. I mean, most of them are really dedicated, um, and some of them are frustrated um, with not being able to, and 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 that kind of stuff, and. Um, I think the curriculum is is a big component. Um, the professional development and being on the same page is a big component. I think parental involvement is a big frustration for a lot of teachers. And if it can be framed in a way where um, the goal of grading is to um, get kids motivated, Keep them, you know, keep them moving towards a good direction and communicating with parents to get them involved and motivated. Then, then, then it can be a positive thing instead of using up equity. It can be something which actually gives equity to teachers with what their overall goal is. So it's not just kind of another change, another pressure, but here's something moving in a good direction. You know, I think it's part of the framing of how it's done. Yes. Because we don't want to put any more weight on their shoulders. Can I, can I throw in one other no. thing? I found that when I meet the teachers in PLC meetings and there's no one else in the room, they'll tell me. Oh, because they do. I, was just, I just listen yeah, and I say, just tell me. I can't help you if I don't know. So I need to do some more of that as we grade this process. We'll talk about that.
I like surveys, but sometimes surveys are just a blind hot shot at other people. If the survey here back is clean and like sincere about what the problem is, and not the people that implemented the problem, it can be really effective. Well, I think if we're going to do a survey, we go into PLCs, tell them there's something coming, and we kind of put it that way. Guide that process. If we, if we guide that process, yeah. then the the data that we get from the survey is going to be automated. Yeah, yeah, I just I'm not a fan of blind surveys as a general. No, I don't. But about the topics, I'm more comfortable. Yeah. Right. And I think we're going to need to give them process time so they can put their thoughts really in. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. It's Good. critical that we that it's used to build trust, not break trust. Absolutely. Right. We'll talk about that. Later. I know <clears throat> none of us, yeah. any of us in this room actually were here when confidence based screening was rolled in. Except Mr. But I, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's over there. Um, but I can say for myself, when it came in, I don't know if it was like that. I'm pretty sure there was no, there wasn't a lot of communication. I don't know how much time there is or what. I was curious to know if that's not Get rid of yeah, you know, I, yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but as a parent, I was that that I was definitely a of the system. When everything switched over, the confidence base, I was just like, okay, this is happening. Yeah, um, I don't think I'm not sure the community. I don't think the community really ever understood. And still don't. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I think that's important um, going forward. Because I think there's a lot of resistance. That's part of there's that's part of the resistance. I still remember the story of one parent who went to four different teachers, educators, you know, principals, assistant principals, and got four different answers on what competency based education was. You know, <laughs> that's kind of frustrating. It, it, it says there's not a central message there. Okay, we're done. Okay. okay. Yeah, we finished first. We did finish first. Very efficient. We are. I think just finished right. the test right. of kindergarten. Or it's like, you know, like we do the blue one. Yeah, yeah. Like a primary version. Yeah. 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 And said, how do you test? We're not How do you test? We're not test. We're not test. We're not test. We're not test. We're I had uh, rheumatic heart disease when I was in first grade, so I was home in bed all, all year, and I had a tutor who came in, who was my teacher from first grade, she came in once a week and taught me to read and write and do and things like that. But she would do a test, how she would do a test she would frame it as a game. And she would say, we're going to play games. And that was something that always stuck with me for the rest of my life, was that it was kind of, did the teacher teach it? Did I learn it? Where are we? It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a thing of pass fail. It was on a personal level, it was kind of like, did I get it? Yeah, it was it was a fantastic thing. Oh yes, had that. First of all, you got that foundational skill of reading. Yeah. And then I taught my younger sister, who was a year younger, to read. Yeah. And she was not. She was still a year away from kindergarten. She got to kindergarten. Kindergarten. Teacher told her not to read, but she wasn't supposed to read yet. Because didn't do it her way, or right? It was not on her timeline, and that affected her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Not on my timeline. I can't do it. My it's grandmother weird. was left handed. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't supposed to be left handed. Yeah. 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 So they said, yeah. no, put that pencil down. You can do it this way. Right. And it's, just, it's just weird how philosophies and times change. She, yeah. she ended up being named the which is really cool. Right. But I don't think right. it was by design. <laughs> <laughs>
So I noticed that uh, Mr. Gerstein cites himself many times in here. Over and over and over again. He's like the number one. But he was the foundation. He was doing a lot of this work before there were many others doing it. So I'm not sure that it, it helps his credibility at times. Yeah. But it certainly it is it does stand out with the citations. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter is a professor of uh, political science at uh, Pittsburgh. And and she she lost her she didn't get sent because she published a lot of stuff that was on kind of cutting edge stuff and it was all peer review through middle school and her peers she had excellent research and all this kind of stuff but you know all it takes is one out of five to say I don't believe it she would try to or you know it's too good to be true you know that kind of thing you know I mean she was on you know felons voting and ex felons voting and all kinds of stuff and, you know voting Right. She's she's very very so, liberal, <laughs> but that's that's who she is, and yeah. she has all the arguments and stuff behind it. it. And and she, she didn't. Know. She got published she like four times instead of six. She lost her, so she's got to figure out what, what she does next. You know, she's got her doctorate. She'll figure it out. You know, so, uh, like she's great in that and ambitious. Uh, she'll she'll uh, land on yeah. Oh yeah, is, is that where your grandchildren? Are? No, she has no children. I have uh, grandchildren in Greenwich. Same thing. All right, I'm going to bring this back together now. That's okay. So, um, so, first of all, I, 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 this was one of the most fun things I've done in almost two years. And I know that's really sad. It's not snowboarding. I didn't mean like, you know, okay, snowboarding is way more fun. But, but being here with, in my work, listening to you all talk has been one of the most fun things that I've done in a while. It was really great. We're not talking about COVID and we're not talking about money. Mm -hmm. We're talking about kids and our values around learning. <clears throat> That's what I want to see us doing a lot of. Because we can't get anywhere if we can't figure it out. So I, I, I did my, I just, anytime I heard one group say something, I wrote it down in Ambrose Messy board writing. Okay. I, I use a projector and a typing. I don't, my, I'm sorry for my penmanship. So was my father-in-law, who's a third grade teacher. When I first met my wife, he used to mail me penmanship papers, <laughs> you know, as a joke. We, we get along great. He's super funny. So, so what I did was I said, these are things that, that seem to be common. And these are things that seem to be things that we need to improve. Not necessarily negative or positive, but I was just making symbols too. So, so I would actually change that. I don't like, I was just writing fast. So uh, common and improve. Opportunities. These are opportunities. <laughs> all right. Those are opportunities. What's the definition of common? Common things that I heard that were things that we probably agree on. We may not, and we're going to talk about them. Right. I may be wrong. I'm just, I'm giving you. Um, so the way I work with people in my work is I tend to um, sit with them and give them the opportunity to share their thoughts and feelings for as long as it takes. And then I take a minute and summarize what they're saying. And then I ask them if I got it right. And usually they say, well, you got most of it, but. And then I listen a lot longer and then I summarize again. And then, then I say, okay, did I get it? Did I get it? And they're like, well, you got most of it, but. It usually takes three butts before I get to the, yeah, we're good, right? Because you can't really get the fullness of what someone's trying to convey in one situation of listening. It's impossible because they don't even know what they're trying to say to get it out in one sitting of listening. And once in a while I get at the end, yeah, you got it, right? And once in a while it takes six rounds and an hour and a half. With Jamie, it's a lifelong pursuit. So I, you know, everybody's different and we're all working together here. And 
one thing that I wanted to reflect to the group is that I just saw a lot of really great listening. People in the room are listening to one another. Like, and I mean, not just yesing people, the body language, the, the, the tone, the community, it was really productive. So I just want you to know that that's not typical. A lot of these kinds of meetings can get really, really sideways and heated. Or just now nah, I'm checking out, I'm here because I have to be and I'm punching the clock. And so I'm, I was just wanting you to hear that, that I saw a lot of really great listening. So thank you for that. I can't ask for anything more, right? I can't. Um, so this is what I came up with. Um, some things that I heard that I kind of think that everybody seemed to kind of generally agree with. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong. Jamie, I'll let you go first. <laughs> um, I heard that effort, effort needs to count. That if kids are putting an effort into work, it needs to count for something. I heard that in all three groups on some level, a variation. It's not, I could make a rubric for that, right? But defining what effort counting is, could it be, we need to talk about it more in the sense that how does it count? Is that daily homework? Is it a weekly assignment? Is it a, a weekly grade? What, there's a lot to unpack there, but I just heard that when people are working for something, it has to count for something. So I just please keep that, I wanted to define it because it can get really granular or really way too big. So I just, anything that you're doing, it needs to count for something, whatever that is. I heard that um, behavior and learning on some level, we seem to have a consensus that they need to be separate in the sense that if, if, you, if you, know, you shouldn't get a passing grade in a course because you show up, sit down, are quiet, compliant, and raise your hand and ask questions, you get a 70. I knew a teacher who did that once, drove me insane. So, so if you were all a class and you came in and showed up and were compliant, quiet, asked questions and, and polite, you would at least get a 70 and pass the course. That makes no sense to me because you have to know the content to pass the course. So if you, the behavior of being compliant, showing up, being, asking reasonable questions, quote, doing your homework, which that gets into the effort counts. We'll talk about that later because homework should count for something. We have to figure out what, but, but that behavior is separate from demonstrating your knowledge, what you know and can do. That those two things, I don't know what this looks like, we think we know what it looks like, but that brings me to my next point. I noticed that everybody kind of said some things exist on paper, but not in practice. That's a big one. And I'm, I'm, I'm pushing it right open. I've heard this directly from teachers and meetings. There's a plan out there about what this is. And then this is what I do. And they're not the same. They don't necessarily always say that, but, but they know that it's not quite working. And they're talking about it. Well, if they're talking about it, then it means that they, they're confused too and we need to support people. And some of them are confused. They're very clear. They just don't like what we're doing. And some of them are want to do what we're doing, but they don't quite know how. It's not ever black and white. We're dealing with a lot of people, right? A lot of different philosophies. Uh, take this room and multiply it by whatever, 30 or 40. That's how many people we're dealing with, right? So no, wait, not that many. 20, <laughs> 250 people there. Okay, so some things exist on practice and not uh, in paper, on paper, but not in practice and vice versa. Some things exist in practice and are not on paper. And I'll take this one step further because I, I do believe wholeheartedly that there are things that I know are going on in buildings and there are things that I don't know. There are things that you know are going on in your building and there are things that you don't know. Same thing for you. It's impossible to know everything that everyone's doing in every, at every minute. And so if we don't have a common philosophy and we don't buy into what we're doing as a community, then we're never gonna get alignment because you can't, you cannot possibly physically micromanage all of these different people, okay? So, so then what I also heard was that we need to align our curriculum. And we got into this horizontally and vertically and we need to have assessments that are aligned in the curriculum and then that is, in my mind, that is the most important thing that we have to do right now, right? Uh, Jim Baker brought it up in the previous meeting. Well, how do you evaluate someone if, you, if the curriculum isn't aligned? I'm like, well, you evaluate the whole teaching practice, but yeah, that's, if you want to hone right in on whether or not the growth is going to occur, that's important, right? What, what are we doing for units and where are the teachers on the units and what's going on? And I'm not saying that people can't vary because they have to vary to be successful, 
but you need to know why they're varying. There's a difference between varying because you're not prepared for the day and varying because you're doing it based on the needs of the students. And that's the evaluator's job to figure out. So then what I also heard was rubrics. And if you'll notice, I, I, I have a little fun here because I put an arrow on both sides for rubrics. There are parts of rubrics that we, I think everyone in this room can at least agree that they are um, applicable and, and they are good in some places, but we have problems with them. So in other words, we need to work on the language, the alignment, and the rigor. Our rubrics, it's not rubrics that are the problem, it's our rubrics that are the problem. It, they're not written well, they need to be improved. They were a first attempt from seven years ago before COVID. They need to be revamped. And even Ken O'Connor on the call the other day told us rubrics, our rubrics need work. He did not like the language. So we're hearing from an outside expert that our rubrics have problems, which just affirms what, what we think. So, so if we're going to work on rubrics, they have to have an alignment to that curriculum, the math, and then they have to be have rigor, or we're not going to get anywhere, right? Now, if, if we talk about, um, um, I did hear the frequency of grading, which goes back to effort counts, right? So that was just another, they're kind of tied, I'll, I'll, I'll link them. And then the purpose of grading, we all kind of agree that grading is, the purpose is to communicate, either to the student, whether or not they're doing well, to the parent who needs support to know what to do to help their kid. I always used to say that parents want to know three things for a student. Is my kid at grade level? Um, and how are they in relationship to their peers and what can I do to help them? Because it's one thing if you're at grade level and everyone else is, it's another thing if you're, you're not at grade level and everyone else is at grade level. So it just depends on what's going, you want to look at the whole information. How do we share that information? I, I'm a dad, I want to know those three things. And if that report card is seven pages long with all kinds of P's and BP's and E's, I'm just going to put it on the desk and say, how are you doing in school and call the teacher. I mean, it's just a point where I can't process that as a parent. I don't have the capacity to process a seven-page report card. So, so then the, the other thing is, is uh, um, skills are super important. So, so I think that that goes back to rubrics in the sense that rubrics don't mean that we don't teach skills. Everybody in this room talked about on some level that skills are super important. Right? You have to know your multiplication tables. You have to know how to add. You have to know how to subtract. You have to know your 25 sight words to be able to read in first grade your, or 50 or, or 75 or, or 100 by second grade. You have to know those things, and those are skills. So the question for me became one of balance, which is the last thing that I'll talk about. Okay. So then when I go over to this other side, these are things that we need to work on. If you notice, that's a little bit more festive. It's it's, it's got a lot more to do, right? Which is fine because these are our opportunities. Our opportunities are, why are our kids not motivated and what are we going to do about it? We all agree that that's important to fix or to, to, to work on, or at least I heard that. I could be wrong and you'll have a chance to tell me so in a minute and I'm fine with that. What is the message to the kids? What are we telling them when we give them these, these grades? And if the rubrics aren't aligned and rigorous, then what is the message to the children and what does that do for their motivation? That's an opportunity for growth for us. Um, and you'll see I did have rubrics on both sides because that language alignment and rigor is super important, but they still had a place in our lives, I think. I don't think that we need to throw them out. I think we need to use them and figure out how to do this well so that we get what we want. The big question about GPA. I'm not even going to unpack that right now because it's a big problem, right? It's we're really not using the GPA system, but we are, and it's a mess. So I think that we need to talk and, and work on that in, as we move forward. And then the other piece is parental involvement. We all agree that communication and parental involvement is a significant problem for our district. It really is. I, I, I only hear about things after they happen when people are upset, not before, even putting meeting, we reach out so much. All of us, not me, we. We all reach out a lot, and it's really hard to get parental involvement. Ryan had coffee for the principal the other night, and four people showed up. He's trying. The same four. The same Three. four people. Three people, yeah. Well, no, it was four. It was four, but two of them were from one, perhaps. Right. All right, so, so here's right. another one. <laughs> we're having a beer night. Um, I think it's really important to say that 
<laughs> that we, we agree agree that we agree that this is kind of like a twofer. Um, the timing of multiple opportunities reassessment is really important. So if we're going to give a kid an opportunity, if a kid has an opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge and they don't do well at it, we need to give them another opportunity, but it can't be months later. It needs to be time. Because if they needed to know what they weren't able to demonstrate, we can't, we can't wait, right? Which is goes, gets into intervention. That's a whole other thing, right? Especially for our younger kids. We, everybody agrees that the decaying average is not working. Nix it right now. It's bad. It's not working. Let it go. Uh, by the way, even Ken O'Connor said that. So that, that was important. We asked him about that. Um, our PLCs, um, they exist. We have PLC meetings. Uh, it's the biggest concern that I have about early release because if we wanted to reduce the budget some and, and not have as many specials and have early release instead to have PLCs meet, that's a problem, right? But we, we have some ideas to deal with that. And, and I, I think that we're gonna be okay. Um, they meet but they're not really quite there yet. So I would put them in the almost done category. They're, they're half baked right now, but the oven's still on and we're watching the timer. PLCs are the most important. If, if teachers can't meet, collaborate, talk about student learning, talk about what they need to do to improve student learning and change instruction, then we will never get better. You have to change and you can't, the definition of insanity, I'll see my email. Right, doing the same thing over and over again. I don't really know if Einstein said that, but it's still fun, right? It it just it it's true that if you do the same thing over and over again, you're gonna get nowhere. And COVID has forced us to do not only the same thing over and over again for two years, but almost less of it. Right. So we're coming out of that. So then what I also heard everyone saying is that the reporting is super important, and that ties into the parental involvement, right? And those two things, the style and the volume, are really important. I have always said that if we can't send it home in a single-sided, single sheet of paper, it's too much. It's an overview. The job of a report is to tell you, Dawn, you are not doing well in math class. I am not your right. Right, right. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to tell you. That's and, and if you get that part, it's supposed to say, it's supposed to say, Brian, call the teacher because your son is doing the bare minimum again. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you gotta talk to people. We can't this. Grade reporting isn't designed to give you every granular detail of everything that's going on. The teachers need that information to inform instruction. The parents need to know, is my kid doing okay? And what do I do about it? And then the last thing is, is that the, the community perception, we all agree it is not good right now with regard to grading. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Can't fix it if you don't own it. And I'm owning it bad. So trust came up. We, we have a, a major problem right now with the trust with parents, teachers, and students. We have to involve them in this process of revisioning how we're grading and assessing. That's my opinion. We cannot do this to people. Mm -hmm. We have to do it with people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a, a, an important thing for me. We need people to come together, talk about this, and figure out a plan together. I'm so thrilled that you're here, right? It's great, right? And we need more, right? More parents to come in and talk. And then the other thing is, uh, uh, I had a question. Well, oh, oh, and I also said, how do we do E? Mm -hmm. what, what is, it doesn't matter to me if it's 100 or it's a 90. What is excellence? How do we get there? And how do we teach the teachers to teach that? And it, there's a continuum, and I won't get into it right now, but we'll talk about that as we go through the process. And then last, I think the biggest thing is, are, are there times when rubrics are better and other times when percents are better? Why can't it be balanced? Why does it have to be a 100-point scale or rubrics? I'm, I'm asking, and I'm not joking, I'm asking a sincere question that I don't know from a research base what the answer is. I know how I feel. And how I feel is that it, it's not nature versus nurture, it's both. Is it rubrics versus 100 point scale? Or is it that some are good for some things and some are good for others? I don't know. I, I just like us to 
to look at that question and talk about balance. What is the balance? Did the pendulum swing too far one way in Sanborn, but we run the risk of swinging it too far the other way? Can we, can we just be careful and not throw all the good stuff out? We have a very high, I'll give you a couple of examples, some data. We have a super high graduation rate. That is not easy to achieve. We have more, almost all of our students are meeting the definition that we adopted of student success because we focused on it, even in the pandemic. We, we, have, we have worked ridiculously hard to keep kids engaged in school. Our dropout rate is super low. That does not start at high school. That starts in first grade. I'm super nervous about losing some of those things if we swing this too fast to one way. We have to be very careful. And, and I'll say it again, and it's not popular and I don't care. The SAT was not designed to assess the effectiveness of a high school, but our score is still stink. 30% of kids doing well on the SAT is unacceptable. But that doesn't mean that the school is totally failing either. The two things are not necessarily totally linked, but they're not unlinked either. What it tells me is that we have a problem with the curriculum. We have a major curriculum problem. We have um, a focus problem and we have a parent and student engagement problem. And within the focus problem, that includes intervention, right? They're not getting doing well, we do something about it. Our scores drop off in middle school like many, many schools. That's not uncommon, but it's really severe here. And I can't tell where it's coming from and I'm not gonna even remotely attempt to unpack that now. Okay, so that's what I heard overall. I, I want you all to like sit back down and talk about what I just said. And you can be like, yeah, Ambrose, no way. And I'm fine with that because I'm just trying to help move us forward. But could you all just take a few minutes to just talk about your thoughts and feelings about what I just shared and we can make some adjustments. Tammy's been, I'm gonna, I take a picture of these and then I just kind of, you know, I can type it up. I don't want to have read to- it? I, can, I know. I'm sorry. That's well done. That's well done. I'm sorry. That's if we were in college, I'd give you a high five. Who's typing that up? Better be. I don't think anyone else. I've got it that. already typed. If he's going. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. Typing. Everyone knows that's my you know, secret. That's 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 my do. secret. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's what I share out as a group, right? We're going to talk as a group. Let's just take five, eight minutes to just talk about Rudy. Sure. What I just reflected. I have a donut. Yeah. Well, help me. I think you did a pretty good job. Somebody write that down. She doesn't say that often, so someone write that down. I think it also comes to the fact that I think I think that 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 I I mean, I was thinking about it as you, as you were saying, I was saying, okay, how about in a math test? You know, you could have a grade thing, but what about effort? What about process? What about, you know, showing your work, that kind of thing? There, there are some parts of that that are not just absolutely just getting the right answer, but, you know, kind of thinking it through. It's, a, it's about training your mind to work. So I don't, I think the Rubik's is, I don't think the just going to a hundred point works. But the other part is, I mean, you have to look at potential roadblocks, right? I mean, we use, regardless of what we use, we're going to use some sort of an online grading system. You can't have a hundred point scale for this assignment and then a totally different way of assessing for this assignment. Like there's no online program that does that. So like there is, there are some constraints. Again, doesn't mean that you can't tweak either one, but you, there is, you kind of have to think about it a little bit more like, how does it go from practice to communication to you know so i think yeah you know, i think the concern is that um with the rubrics that there's too much stuff too much room for maybe sel and you know subjective kind of stuff and things like that versus academic rigor 
And I think it just has to be very clearly defined. The academic rigor counts, effort counts, you know, um, that kind of thing, process, learning, having usable knowledge. Those are the things that you're looking for. It isn't, it isn't just having social emotional okayness. I mean, that's a part of, that's a component of being able to learn, but it's not what the academic, you know, grading system's about. It's kind of one of the ingredients that goes into being successful. Right. Like, and I've started at a young age, realizing it's my son that I wanted to make a project for the character and make sure and everything else. Is that it's process. Process is how you get to the end result. It's not just cutting corners and finding the easy answer, or that's like promoting cheating in my eyes. And, and I'm sorry, I know that it's a little joke with some people that are finding it in their aspect. Um, but you know, I want my son to be proud of his work, take okay, steps in order to take the progress, to be kind of dollars go into the work system. You know, I can use the phone and say, okay, you know what you're doing. We have a training system, something that shows us how to take those steps if we're skeptical, where to accomplish those tasks, how to do it safely. So we do all these different things as an adult, but why are we doing it as our kids? You know, the process of how to get to that end result is just as important as important as them, but it is just as important as the one And as for the percentages going from zero to 100, and some parents disagree, I've talked to several, who are not representing just themselves, but otherwise they go off on a different tangent. But, um, but for me and some of the other parents that can really just kind of present to me, you know, our child earns the percentage that I get. They earn the grade. So their process, the way that they, their efforts towards learning these things, taking the time, each step of the way, everything is calculated in there, you know, whether that's done by a percentage, like 10%, 5%, so on and so forth, or What's the process being used? If you can't determine what the process being used, how are you going to figure out what's the better way for the kids to learn it? I, I, I you can't, you know, I mean, you have to look at the whole versus just the question. Yeah. Not for nothing. I'm certainly not going on a gusty tour after this meeting gets on, gets over. But he talks about the three P's, and, and process is one of the core three like pillars that he talks about as far as like what do we want to make sure that we're looking at with kids and communicating. You know, there's the product, what you learn, you know, and, and how you know what your grade was essentially. But then there's that process piece of how did you get there? Like that's that's the second piece that he says is critically important to make sure parents know about so so he's in alignment with this conversation whether or not we necessarily use his terminology and how we communicate it is different but but he would agree philosophically with everything that you just said so that's good that's good and, and again, Maybe it's not a clear definition as to what we're saying, but there is um, getting big on as much. And I haven't um, became, yeah, became an average thing. Maybe there's a miscommunication for me, anyways, and I'll completely admit maybe there's that's what the scenario is because I'm looking at it as teaching process versus, you know, just the rules in itself. Um, but again, the all this information really was that's what it is. is I moved out into Kingston in uh, uh, December of last year. So we were halfway through the school year when we came into the system. What a year to move in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so we moved from Rochester, which was, a, and I started looking, I always look at the school systems, what their numbers are, and so on and so forth, and I'm like, oh, maybe these are great numbers, these are great, 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 great
Somewhere along the line, there was that trauma and communication of schools and pushing more the kids than the families that need to pretty much level them. He's still advanced, but the thing is, is I don't want to see other kids being left behind in this process. So losing the steps that they need to take in order to reach the goals that they're looking for. Every every kid has to Even when they say, I don't care. My friend's son, 18 years old, I don't care. Now it's expected to be very difficult to do the work. And he's really smart kid, but he's done with doing what he's doing. So it's all a matter of really kind of pushing that or trying to figure out, like you're saying, what is the best? What is going to motivate them to get that good grade? For some, it's the grade itself, like my son. Others, it's going to be interaction. Um, you know, I've had kids like that. I give you a little background. I worked at a boys' school. So I've had kids that were more motivated with music and with things like that. And they were able to really kind of get it a lot easier, weirdly enough. But it uses different parts of the brain. brain. But it's, these are all things yeah. that you can recognize in data to say they can figure those dynamics out at what level that they need to use. Yeah. Um, that's not where I'm going well, yeah. when I'm coming from. Which is the one that I'll give you the picture in order for our teachers or education systems to be able to go, hey, this is what we do for sure. We're not going to say that we're not going to do that. I don't know if it's really process that you know right that process or whatnot, but I have a history at home. So that's why I'm asking I'm very passionate about not only my kids but abroad and all the children. I think the one thing that I don't know like amazing part like where am I going to be in what so you know I mean I just really want to see that. There isn't an easy story. Right. I'm going to mm -hmm. bring us back and we'll, like, like one more minute wrap up, right? Because okay. Brian's, these guys are having a pretty hard, I think we're all kind of, so psychologically, we, we, we get to the point after about 90 minutes where we need some kind of a break. So if you notice this whole thing has been structured, I, I just want to point out that a, a lot of this, and I thank Patty for the, the protocol, um, but the, the, the flow of this is a lot like what we do at Teachers College, which if you notice a couple of things that didn't happen, no one sat and got, except for when I reflected. There was only like, you know, well, maybe it's too long. If I try to keep it to 10 minutes, it might be 20, but it's still better than 40. But, but the sit and get part was very little. Everyone had an opportunity to talk and share, and you had a common text to focus the conversation so that ideas were rooted in something other than each other. Does that make sense? So the text doesn't really matter. You can have a text for anything. Mm -hmm. The text could have been a New York Times article. What do you think or agree or disagree? It's okay to do it that way. But I wanted to model what's most important to me as a, as a superintendent is instruction. If you learned 10 things from each other in the last hour and a half, I'm, I'm moving things forward. And if you notice, I was walking around, but I, was con I wasn't conferencing, so there's one level higher. What I did was the first level of this kind of work, which is called workshop instruction. And I listened to you and observed for what you knew and could do or were talking about, and then thought about what the next step would be for instruction. And it's really important for you to realize that the next level for me would be to actually engage in your groups or confer with each of you individually on personal goals about what you were working on. I, I wouldn't do that here. That wouldn't be appropriate. But I just wanted you to get a taste of kind of where we were headed before the pandemic hit us, right? This is what we want school to feel like, is that you, everyone has an opportunity to work, learn, and share, and be engaged. That's what matters to me, is that school is, the instruction is really solid. And I hate to give him credit, but Jamie said something true, which is... I just make it up. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the quality of the teacher in front of the kids is the most important thing for academic achievement, not what we use for a grading system. And yes, an aligned curriculum is important when you're talking about content, but not always when you're talking about skills. I have had some amazing teachers in first and second grade who knew who knew how to teach reading like it was nobody's business. Give them a curriculum, they're going to teach reading like it's nobody's business. Don't have a curriculum, they're going to teach reading like it's nobody's business because they know how to teach reading. It's a little trickier when you're trying to teach, you know, World War II history. You have to have a sequence and, a, you know, it's a different thing to teach than how to read, right? And that's why I keep talking about the balance of the skills versus, you know, rote skills that are quantifiable. Can you do X, Y, and Z? versus process knowledge and the expression of uh, application of those things. We, we, uh, so, so what do you guys, I'm thinking that our next step is that we do another meeting, maybe not two hours, this is a long time, but I really didn't want us, I loved that I could let this breathe and not be like rushed or shut something down. But I think our next steps are to have a conversation about what do we do next? What is the next step? I don't think that we can unpack that in 45 minutes. And I don't think that any of us have the mental capacity mm -hmm. to unpack that in 45 minutes. Well, well, 15 that minutes, that I mean, I would like to, I had to take a bathroom break. I couldn't take it, but we could do it after the school board meeting. Yeah, Gene, yeah. you're <laughs> such a brown nose. <laughs> is that, is that yeah. what you're yeah. hearing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, exactly. At Gene's house. I can order a book like this. Yeah, oh, so in, in the school meeting, yeah. yeah. So, so I think that our, our next step needs to be what is the next step and how do we take our opportunities and turn them into an action plan? I, and I will say that the next step in my mind is asking staff what they think mm -hmm. and, and unpacking that data as a team. Is there anyone in this room that disagrees that unpacking that data is a bad idea? I'm, I'm looking at you. I think he was going to double negative on purpose. Or not. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I think that, that, that it was two negatives, but it tied to two different things. Unpacking the data, bad idea. No, do, do you all feel like it would be a good idea to do a survey of our parents and students? Students, and I'd like to see us survey recent graduates, kids that are in college specifically. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see us get feedback right from the mouths of the kids that we're working with once they're in a school. Here's a quick question though. Yeah. The kids in college. Do we have a percentage? How many, how many of our graduates go to college? Brian has all that. Well, yeah, we used to have better when we had nominees. So unfortunately, when we dropped the the expense, not expensive, but when we went to the cheaper college tracking tool, we lost that ability to have the clearinghouse data. We used to get data on how well our kids did. Oh, oh he's asking you how many go. How not, many not how, go? They used to have data you know, on how many yeah. stay. They used to have data. Yeah, so again, state. once once they leave us, our ability to continue to track them is limited. And that's where that clearinghouse data was really helpful because anybody who's part of the clearinghouse data system, you have a number. And even if you transfer schools, you stay part of that system and then we get data every so often on them a couple times a year we, we lose that ability because they tell us what they're going to do they could tell us they're going into the military and they're ready to go to boot camp three days after graduation we can count them as mm -hmm. they went into the service what if they don't finish boot camp we have no way of knowing that right you know what I mean? but i think what jamie's just asking is a, a simpler how many kids tell you that they're going to college yeah. and are accepted? Yeah, and that's it, is that our, what you're asking, Gene? Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is important. To yeah, yeah, yeah. On our, on our website, we track mm -hmm. it every year. We, I've been reporting it. There's like a one pager yep. that we've reported every year since about 2012. We can go back further with data, but it's not done in that same template that says what percentage of our kids do two year school, four year school, apprentice. For trade school, military, gap year. And Can you send that link? Is yeah. that yeah. graduation central link? It's the grad, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, okay, yeah. so, yep. so let's stay on the so next steps. I, I think that that um oh, I'd like to hear from you, but I, but I'm I think that doing a, a really open-ended but focused survey on what people feel like is working with regard to grading, what is not working. And what do they suggest we do about it? Same thing as the way I structure my injury plan conversation, and really any conversation. What's the problem? What are your ideas? 
right? But don't tell, you gotta tell us what's working too. Because if we don't know what's working, we might inadvertently mess something up. So let's get some qualitative data. But I, I wanna be clear that if we survey the staff, the students and the parents, the raw data is getting shared to this group. Mm -hmm. Not we 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 don't want anyone to feel like we're we're not manipulating this in any way. There's no process here. Processing. Patty could run some like she's really good at those little pie things and share them with the raw data. But it needs to be the raw data, and we'll have to discuss it probably confidentially because it's kind of a you might be able to identify people through it. We'll 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 see how that comes out, right? Um, I also think that it would be a good idea for the ISA committee to offer one of your meetings as um, a, 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 what do they call it in poker, a sit and go, <laughs> where, where you pay your, you, you pay one fee, you come and play poker and if you lose, you're out. No, I'm just kidding. But you could have everyone come and show up and just anyone who wants to, teachers, invite them to like coffee with the ISA committee to talk about grading and let them, we'll invite some people to come and talk to us. We may not get anybody, but we can't say that we can't offer. I mean, heck, I'll talk to Patty. You might even have some money that we can pay people a stipend if they come. We'll, we'll figure it out. I could take that one step further because they may not come, but could, if we wanted to have a concerted effort to learn more about how the system works, we need to hear from the different stakeholders, teachers, for example, right? If we can't, if it's too, um, anxiety prone for the for them to come to a group like this and share openly but maybe we can have them record some little videos of what assessment looks like i'll get shared yep and give them and another then, alternative and we look at so we we decide what it is we want to look for and then we seek that either they come in person or there's a video or something but we have an opportunity to then explore that from the trenches some of it may not be about teachers it's about parent perceptions or student perceptions too. And you can do the same thing. I just I just want to build more positive relationships between the board and the teachers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we yes. can't do that if they're not sitting down together talking, which means that if Jamie, who's now retired, is willing to come to the high school and sit down and talk to people, I want him to do that. If well, you want to take an afternoon and come over, we'd love to have you, early right? Release Wednesdays. Yeah, an early release, one Wednesday. early release Wednesdays. Because you've got yeah. the captive audience and just have it yeah. be an open yeah. forum in the cafeteria. Just not on, that. No. Not, 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 not on a board meeting day. On a board meeting. Not on a board meeting Wednesday. Not on a board meeting Wednesday. They're already too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got the board, too. Yeah, yeah. OK, so so we're looking at, really, we're doing some qualitative research, right? We're looking at survey data. We're looking at interview data, and then we're looking at also just an outreach component to have a conversation. And ultimately, at some point, this group of people is going to have to recommend to the school board what it is that we want to do. And it isn't just about whether or not we go to a 100-point scale. I think everyone realizes at the end of this conversation that that is just one component of the whole problem. It really is. It's one piece. And it's, it solves some problems and makes others. And before we make a decision about anything, I think we need a lot of information so that everyone feels like they've at least had an opportunity to be included in the process before a decision is made. And that's what I want for my teachers, for the people that I care about, is that they have a voice in it. And, and Brian and I have talked about, you know, the definition of consensus. And what we've shared as a consensus definition among the leadership team is that the will of the group is evident and everyone has had an opportunity to speak, even those who disagree. So when we get to the end of whatever we're going through, there will be people in this room, could be myself, who completely disagree with what ends up happening. If you've had an opportunity to share your point of view and you've talked about it and it comes out a different way in the end, it comes out a different way in the end. Got to accept that because ultimately the board has to approve whatever we do. But they listen to you the board members, right? They listen to you at the board level. You do the homework. If you do the homework and you bring it to the board, they're gonna to listen to your recommendation. And we just wanna make sure that that recommendation has an element of input from everybody. Doesn't mean that they'll agree once we decide. And, and we may go through all of this and feel like, okay, we've heard all of this and we don't agree, that's fine. You can't say that you didn't know once you decide. That's all I care about. Can we make sure when we do the surveys, especially when we're talking like, surveying the students, can we make sure that there are different surveys for each level, each building? Yeah, some differentiation. 
it's going to be you have to ask the questions very differently. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to make sure there's not one generic survey. And I really like the principles of each building to have input on how the questions are formed. Yeah. Oh, I think everyone in this room will. Yeah. We'll all we'll all read the it's surveys. Really important to make sure that because they know their students better than anyone. Yeah. I mean, obviously the teachers, but you guys know your students, you guys know your crowd, you know what is going to make sense to them when you ask it. So I think that's really important that there's input and it doesn't just come from like SAU, right? Yeah. Surveys. It yeah, yeah. Needs more yeah. input. No, I, I would suggest that, that thanks. You're asking about our process for creating the survey. So before we do that, is everyone okay with this? Yeah. I'm okay with the survey. My concern is always is, is the timeliness. I, I think we move like a, a, a battleship that is trying to turn without an engine. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm concerned about without time. a rudder. Without an engine sometimes. Yeah. 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 Um, and also to, to Don's point, you have to be careful. Surveys are only as good as the questions. And if you're not tailoring the questions such as you get in the information that you can use to be actionable, too many times surveys lead to, well, I think we're going to need another survey because I'm not sure what this survey means mm -hmm. in terms of the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah we don't so want that. We, we don't care about how we create the survey. Yeah, I'm so right there, it has to be actionable information that comes from it, not just yeah, I mean, if, if you don't if you don't structure it right, you don't get the the actionable information. That's exactly what I was saying to this group when we were talking. So, so if we had a process with involving surveys and meeting with people to get more information, are you are you in support of that? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm just asking if you're well, you're on the ice. Don, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, and we were just talking that the survey at level would have to be very different. Very different. It may be more conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Go to classes. Yeah. His qualitative data yeah. may be very yeah. different than your fifth grade data. Yeah. And I'm not even sure how appropriate it would be. I mean, I, we'd yeah. have to talk about it, but I mean, I'm not sure what perspective or context a five, six, or seven year old is going to know. I think if you ask specific questions like, do you understand what an IP means or a two like I think you can ask specific questions, especially when you're talking like fifth, sixth graders. I think you can ask specific questions about their comprehension and their understanding of the grading system. Yep. I think you can go there with that. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to do a lot more than that or do a lot more than that, but it, right. I want to know what I really want to know from the students is do they understand it? Yep. yep. And does it mean something to them? And does it motivate them? To work harder, so or so do better, or engage. And yeah, I think that's great. Right. And Brian was saying more that four or five year olds would have a hard time. I think right. fourth, fifth, and sixth graders would be fine. Yeah, they'll do yeah. a great job with the survey. So so, Jeannie, I, I'm going to put deadlines on this because we know that goals without deadlines lead to the rudderless ship, right? So so I think that it, what we should do is the administrative team will will draft surveys that are we feel are appropriate for the grade level, and then we will get them out to you, and we will discuss them at the next ice meeting. And plan to roll them out the next morning. Which is when? Uh, when is the next meeting? Well, a month from now. That's oh, the wow. well, no. Well, that's that's we're running into yeah. 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 It's delayed, so we have to decide that. Well, could we meet on an off day? You have your organizational meeting. Is there a way, even if ISA gets together virtually, to just review the? I'll get back to you all the plan and the timeline. It'll be reasonable. We'll get it done. I want the results in our hands for the April meeting. Yeah, the April. Yeah. So I, we'll agree on April. the April's the second meeting in April. We want the results mm -hmm. here by then to unpack. We can't go any slower. It's going to be tough, but we got to work if we're going to get this done. The second, are you talking ISA meeting? Or yeah, the, the second right? um, the the, board meeting is April 5th. Yeah, yeah. The first I board meeting is April 6th. The second is the 13th because it's a the weird meeting. one. Yeah. So, like April 13th, we have the results in our hands. That's ambitious, but I think we can do it. We would normally meet on March 16th. That's after the election. The, you know, right. You can make an exception. And yeah. Meet. We, you know, Could we meet on the 17th for a special meeting then. once the committees are assigned? 
Oh, I always forget about you with that. Seventeen. Well, He's eighteen. Surprise. Can we meet on Christmas? Jimmy, Jimmy, did you not say beer already? I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll figure. I'll be in touch. We'll, 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 we'll set a meeting. Let's set a meeting for ISA right after the organizational meeting, but before the sixth to check the surveys. You guys have to read them and give us feedback. We have to create them together, really. We're just going to give you something, but we're going to email them out to the group for feedback mm -hmm. so that you can work on them and not show up at the meeting and unpack the whole thing. Right, right, right. right. So, Chair, just a question. Oh, yeah. um, before we close, we have uh, two people from the public that aren't normally here, and I'd be really interested in knowing if they have any comments that they want to make prior to That's on the agenda. Public comments it? on the agenda. Oh, good. <laughs> are we done with the rest of them? Are we going moving to public comment? Are you done? Uh, I'm done. Are you done? I guess. Okay. Okay. Any public go comments? ahead. Are you on me to go? Um, I'm a mom out of the middle school. So um, one of the things that I've kind of come across is that it's important to me and important to my son and important to his friends and the other parents is the fact of process being able to kind of take into accord of everything that kind of transpires going forward um, in these kids' education, whether it be done by percentage or not by percentage, that's neither hearsay, but everything should count. Um, being able to you know, incorporate um, a lot of the parents, and I won't say all of them because I didn't talk to all of them, but a lot of the parents are leading more towards that zero to 100 um, percent, being able to really understand it a lot better um, as to where their child really stands, um, whether it's an A plus or an A minus, it's an A, we all understand that, but knowing whether or not it's a B or a C in that, you know, BP status go 1.5 to a 2.4, that's, that's a huge difference to a kid, knowing that they're just passing or they're doing really well. Um, the other thing is, is I wanted to throw out there too, um, just because I've done a lot of talking today, <laughs> is um, one of the things it's really difficult for us parents to kind of come to these meetings. I know uh, probably a slew of them wanted to, but the timing of when the meetings actually happen are really difficult for parents who work Monday through Friday until 5 p.m. So um, maybe that's something to reevaluate at least once a month, having an open meeting or once every couple months that's later in the evening. So people like me who are, I took the day off today, let me put it that way, because I feel, felt this was necessary. But there's a lot of parents that don't have that, that conveniency to be able to do that, but yet they still want to be just as involved as I am. So, I mean, just maybe something to think about. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I mean, Annie Collier and our group here gave both of us the opportunity to participate. And so that was great. And I think that the process is really good and uh, looking forward to having this definition and having a better improved communication of what rating system is. Okay, talked about next meeting date. That's I guess to be de to be determined. Uh, anything else before we adjourn? Okay. Wow, we're adjourned.